okay so welcome to today's video and today we will also uh, look at some problems which were given in jam exams so the first problem is from jam 2000 the first problem is from jam 2010 uh, so the problem states that a gas of molecules each having a mass m is in thermal equilibrium at a temperature t let vx vy and vz be the cartesian components of velocity vector v of a molecule then the mean value of the quantity is so again uh, this is an mcq and uh, we have to find the correct answer so this kind of problems uh, it requires understanding the equipartition theorem and you will find that not only in jam but also in just and gate uh, this kind of problems are given often so we'll start from the basics which is the equipartition theorem It states that in thermal equilibrium, any degree of freedom This can be a co component of velocity or position, but one constraint is that any degree of freedom which appears only in quadratic form has an average energy. half kbt and so it will contribute half kb towards the heat capacity of the substance so now that we understand the equipartition theorem so let us first see what is the average energy due to kinetic motion in the x direction so as this term vx square it appears in it has a quadratic form so the average energy will be nothing but half kvt and similarly for other cases also so in y direction it will be half mv y square average and in z direction it will be half m v z square average and all of them will give that vx square Vy square, Vz square, the average of them will be equal to kvt by m h. So, let us go back to the problem. The quantity that we are interested in is Vx minus alpha Vy plus beta Vz whole square. So, let us write it. So, let me define the quantity with i which is vx minus alpha vy plus beta vz whole square and we have to find the average value of i so from the equipartition theorem we know that the average uh, RMS value of the velocity in each x, y and z direction will have a value of kvt over m where kb is the Boltzmann 
constant as you know p is the absolute temperature and m is the mass of the molecule as given in the question m is mass but there will if we expand this i term we can see that let me change the color of the pen i is v x square plus alpha square v y square plus beta square v z square minus 2 alpha v x v y minus 2 alpha beta v y v z plus 2 beta p x p z so if we write the form of average i we'll see that it has both the v y square v x square and v z square average terms but it also have the average of the cross terms so let me write the full expression first sorry this will be 2 alpha beta phi y vz plus 2 beta px vz so this terms the average value that we have obtained earlier here but we don't know about the average value of these cross terms vx vy vz vy and vx vz so what about the value of these terms vx vy vy vz and vx vz now we have to understand the origin of the particles motion in thermal equilibrium the motion will be completely random and as it is a random motion the motion along x and motion along y and motion along z they will be uncorrelated uncorrelated means the motion along one direction will not be determining in any way the motion along the other directions and as we know for random uncorrelated motion the average or mean value is nothing but zero so this comes because the motion of particles along x y z direction are not correlated so this is the important term they are not correlated that is why we are getting the average value of this first term to be zero now that we have obtained these values also we can put them in the equation then average of i will be kvt by m plus alpha square kvt over m plus beta square kvt over m plus 0 0 and 0 for all of the cross terms 
so the answer will be kvt over m times 1 plus alpha square plus beta square so let me box out the answer So in the question, this answer is given by the first option. So option A is the correct answer. Here we learned about equipartition theorem and how we can get the mean value of these quantities which are dependent of Vx and uh, it may be also dependent on x and the position of the particles. So, in any case, if we proceed in this manner, we will get the correct answer, okay. So, this is the first problem of today's video. Okay, so now let us look at the second problem of today's video. This problem was given in jam. 2014. So, the problem states that in one dimension, an ensemble of n classical particles has energy of the form E equal to Px square over 2m plus half kx square. The, then, the average and internal energy of the system at temperature T is. So, we have to find the average internal energy. So, what is given is E, which is the internal energy of one particle. So, there are in particles present so total energy e dot this is total energy e dot will be given by n times e and we have to find the average total energy that is average of e dot which is given by average of n times c as n is constant this will be equal to n times average of e So now we will look at the form of E which is given in the question. So it is given that E is equal to 1 over 2m times Px square plus half k x square. So we know what is E but let us define the other terms also. M is mass of the particle k is a constant it can be thought of as spring constant where half k x square terms will arise in the energy px is the momentum along x direction So, it will be equal to m the mass times Vx where Vx is velocity along x. 
direction and x is the position along x direction obviously and another important uh, thing to notice about this problem is that here one dimension is specified so this problem is a one dimensional problem and we have to calculate the energy accordingly it will be different for uh, 1d 2d and 3d cases but uh, we will see how that is done so we can use these terms and simplify the form of energy as 1 over 2m times m x square plus half x square equals to this will be just the kinetic energy term plus half x square this will be kinetic energy term and this will be analogous to a um, potential energy term where uh, uh, it is like a elastic system which has a force constant k so it can be considered as a potential energy term so we have learned in the previous problem the from the equipartition theorem that every term which is appearing in quadratic term in the formula of energy will contribute a mean energy of half kvt so let us do that again we will our goal is to find average e and average e will be average of half m x square plus half k x square so this will be half kvt and this will also be half kvt so in total it will be kvt and how we are obtaining it we are obtaining it from equi partition theorem which states that in thermal equilibrium where the equilibrium temperature is t each term uh, representing velocity or position we made a mistake here it will be half k x square so let me correct that of k x square so as i was telling equipartition theorem states that every term in the energy which is appearing in a quadratic form uh, it can be a position or a velocity term they will contribute a mean energy of half kvt so from equipartition theorem we are obtaining that half m p x square is half kvt and similarly half k x square is also equal to half kvt these are because these two terms are appearing quadratic in quadratic form so now let me change the color of the pen and uh, proceed further so we have obtained average of e is kvt so like we established that average of energy total like here we did that average of energy total is equal to n times average of energy of a single particle e so this will be equal to n average e equal to n times kvt 
so the answer will be the what is total energy is equal to nkvt so let me box out the result so this is the answer and we have to keep in mind that this is in one dimension and we know that we have not used anywhere in the calculation this 1d factor but i will explain now uh, what will be the difference in the total average energy in case of um, 1d 2d and 3d phase so like we obtained here for 1d case in that energy of one particle only half m v x square plus half k x square terms were present so we can say that only terms related to one dimension is present but what will be the case for 2d it will be slightly different e will be containing half mvx square half kx square terms plus it will also be having half m vy square and half k y square term now these two terms they are of the second dimension so in this case terms in energy expression corresponds to two dimensions And similarly, in case of 3D, we'll have terms corresponding to each of x, y, and z dimensions. So let me write it out in a short form: half m v x square, v y square, plus v z square, plus half k x square, k y square plus z square. Now I am writing it in a very simple fashion. So this k is I am assuming to be same in all direction, but that might not be the case. They can be different. It can be kx for x direction, ky for y direction, k z for z direction. But anyway, even if that happens, now so let me write that case also. Even if this term becomes half kx x square plus half ky y square plus half kz z square even if that happens due to equipartition theorem we will still obtain half k x square is equal to half k y square equal to half kz z square and they will be equal to half kvt so that's how the dimensionality uh, will affect the total average energy so let me quickly write out the average total energy in each for each dimensions so for 1d average energy is as we obtained kvt so average total energy for n particle was n kvt for 2d e is 2 kvt so e total will be 2 n kvt and similarly for 3d is 
e total will be 3 n kvt. So, these terms and these expressions are actually corresponding to these expressions of e. For other expressions, this value will be different. Okay, so let us go back to the problem once again. So, the problem was we have to get the average internal energy of the system uh, e total and the four options were 3 by 2 nkvt, half nkvt, 3 nkvt and nkvt and as we obtained here. So, for 1D uh, the total average energy of n particles having each particle having energy of this form e equal to px square over 2m plus half kx square the correct answer is D which is NKVT. So, this is the correct answer. Okay. So, it is the end of problem number 2. Okay. So, let us continue with the third problem of this video. This problem was given in GIST exam of 2012. GIST 2012. So, the problem states that a monoatomic ideal gas at 17 degree centigrade is adiabatically compressed to 1 by 8 times of its original volume. So, they have asked to calculate the temperature after the compression, and this is again an MCQ. So, there will be only one correct option. So, let us start with uh, the equation of ideal gas which is given by PV equal to NRT and we all know what the terms are but again let me write it for the robustness. P is pressure, C is volume, T is absolute temperature R is universal gas constant and N is the number of moles of the gas and uh, in the question, it is given that the gas is compressed adiabatically. So, we know for adiabatic compression, P V to the power gamma is a constant. And what is this gamma? We discussed this in the previous video. Gamma is the adiabatic index or Laplace's coefficient and it is given by the ratio of Cp over Cv where Cp is the molar specific heat at constant pressure and Cv is the molar specific heat at constant volume. Heat at constant P and this is molar specific heat at constant V and as we have calculated in the first video the value of gamma for a monoatomic gas is given by 5 over 3 and the general formula is 1 plus 2 over F where F is the degrees of freedom number of degrees of freedom ok so let me put a box around this value so now let us uh, proceed further 
so in the question it is given that the volume is changed and we have to calculate the temperature so we need to convert this equation in terms of v and t so how we can do that we will proceed from the ideal gas equation which is pv equal to nrt and we can write that p is nrt over v and from there we can replace the value of p in this equation here and we will obtain that nrt over v times v to the power gamma is a constant so we get that n r t v to the power gamma minus 1 is a constant or to write it in the simplest form t v to the power gamma minus 1 is constant now let us uh, define the problem so at the initial stage the temperature was t1 and volume was v1 so we know from the problem that t1 is 17 degree centigrade or it is 17 plus 273 kelvin which is 290 kelvin and after the adiabatic compression in the temperature becomes T2 and the volume becomes V2 and it is also given that V2 is V1 by 8 because it is compressed to 1 by 8 times. So we will obtain V1 over V2 is equal to 8. Now from this equation we can write that T1 V1 to the power gamma minus 1 is equal to T2 V2 to the power gamma minus 1 and this can be simplified to T2 equal to T1 times V1 over V2 to the power gamma minus 1. So, you can see T2 can be written in terms of T1 times V1 over V2 to the power gamma minus 1 and now you can just put the values T1 is 290, V1 over V2 is 8 and gamma minus 1 is 5 over 3 minus 1 which is 290 times 2 cube times 2 third and after simplification we will get 290 times 4. So this will become 1160 Kelvin. So let me write it T2 is 1160 Kelvin. So, if we go back to the problem, we see that all the answers are given in terms of degree centigrade. So, we just have to convert it to get to the answer. So, T2 is 1160 minus 273 degree centigrade, which will be 88. 7 degree centigrade. So, this is the answer. So, if you visit the problem, we we'll see that the answer D is the correct answer. So, okay, I think uh, 
this is time for today's video and we will meet in the next video okay bye